You wish to speak to me? I will grant your wish on the condition that you leave England at once and remain abroad in France for four years. You would send me into exile? Why do you complain, sir? I've lost everything. And only you. I love you, Captain Bissett. Seymour? Where is Lady Worsley? Where is she? She's worth a hundred thousand to the man she marries. I doubt there's a wealthier, more eligible heiress in the land. <laughs> you are beautiful, madam. You are kind, sir. I have always believed when I meet my match, I shall know it. I wish to marry for love. I have had many offers, oh, sir. Sure you have. <laughs> and when you marry, you wish to marry only for love? Yes. Well, then why not marry a stable boy or <laughs> a footman? Perhaps I will, sir. Gentleman's title and connections are plainly no more than a trifle as far as Miss Fleming is concerned. <laughs> <laughs> if I am one day and before too long to promise myself to another, well, then I would like him to pledge his love and undying devotion to me, for I will marry for no less. Yes, you haven't pressed the point upon me. <laughs> what is it you wish for in a wife, sir? When I marry, one day and before too long, <laughs> I must know in my heart that I can trust my wife to do her duty. I would do the bidding of any man I loved. I am sure, sir, you will meet your match soon. And what man except a fool would not love you, Seymour? Seymour's not home. What time did she leave? She left with Captain Bissett just after you did, sir. Where's that scoundrel's lodgings? The 
sir. Upon your honour, can you say she is not in your house? Sir, she is not in this house. She was here, sir, with Captain Bissett, but they was gone off about five this morning. I did not see her, sir. They have eloped. We have been wed for three months, Richard. Are you weary? No. I... You are my brother Starling. My love. My one. I am yours, sir, to do with as you please. Would you not wish for me to bear you a son? Seymour, I love you. I'm convulsed with passion for you. I have many unspoken desires toward you. Might I speak them? If it pleases you, then... Oh, my dear, it would please me greatly. Mother did not tell me that playing Rantum Scantum would be thus. It did not please you? It was strange, but not unpleasant. Oh, Seymour, I'm sure before long I will call to serve His Majesty as a Privy Councillor. Perhaps it is my destiny that I might one day be Prime Minister. Well, if one day you are, I shall be very proud of you. You will be wreathed in the golden light that shines upon you from my honours and titles. <laughs> I dare say when I achieve a rank within the royal household, I shall be at court most of the time. And I shall be permitted to accompany you. When it is my wish. Madam, our marriage and our frolics are for us and us alone. Of course they are. I must know I can rely on you. Of course you can, Richard. Where is she? Sir. Where is she, damn you? My mistress made me take an oath on my life not to say. Let me be plain, madam. If you do not answer me truthfully this moment, you will be discharged from my service without a reference. You'll be thrown out onto the streets! I know not where they are, only that they are in London. I was awoken from my sleep at the midnight hour. Yes? And I was instructed to bring the child to Lady Worsley at Viscount Deerhurst's home. Right. 
You ought to come with me. We've done it, George. I'm free of him. Know this, Seymour. I will never let you down. The world will take me for a scoundrel, but my heart is in your hand, and I am a slave to your queen. <laughs> we will take breakfast privately, and a bedchamber for my husband and I. Forgive us, ladies. We were resting from our travels. Do not fret, my dear. You'll never find us here. I will be at ease when my Jane is with me. All will be well with the child. Don't call her the child. Shh. Make up the bed, chambers, and be gone. Lady Worsley is unhappy. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Many ladies of rank are want to selfishness. Lady Worsley is a magnificent woman, if I may say so. Yes, you may. You may. Nay, never would I have known that a woman of breeding could be so wanton and so desires fucking. Sir. That is most extraordinary. She says it is love that fuels her passions. Ah. I guess not, my lord. The respite would be most welcome. <laughs> she likes you. You have my permission to try with her. <laughs> you ask too much of me, sir. I am your wife, and I love you. It would not touch my love for you, nor yours mine. Richard, please. You know, I... unless you do as I wish, I suffer viciously with the horn colic. But I don't... Why were you not doing my bidding? You are my wife. Are you not satisfied with looking upon me through the keyhole? No, I'm not. All I wish for, sir, is to be happy and in love and with my husband. All I wish for, madam, is that you do my bidding. You betray my love for you by asking It is not it. betrayal. It is simply my wish. You should wish to please me. I won't. I won't. Then as you wish.
Why? I've promised Deerhurst that you are game. No. Why, I say? No. You see, my lord, what hurts me greatly is that she will not even try to think I married a sour-faced prig. Dearest wish. Deerhurst not kind to you? He was very kind indeed, sir. And yet you are displeased? No. I would not say I was displeased. Are you happy now? Yes. Yes. And if Deerhurst came to play Rantham Scantum again, you would not mind? No, I would not mind, Richard, if it would make you happy and it would improve our union. <laughs> Thank goodness, dear Hurst, it is you. Forgive my appearance, my dear. Captain Bissett, I presume. My lord? Is my Mary here with Jane? Seymour, I'm sorry to bear bad news. Sir Richard is already in London. The Right Honourable Viscount Deerhurst. Mr. Farrer, my attorney. My lord? Sir. So she sent you. We wondered where you were about. He always was her lapdog. Huh. I'm charged with the message, sir. Lady Worsley, having for some time past received many slights and inattentions from Sir Richard. My lord. Which she could bear no longer. As she has had for some time past a partiality for Captain Bissett, she has taken the opportunity of availing herself of it. She is so resolved to abide by it that in case Sir Richard should force her back again, which as her husband he certainly has the right to do, Lady Worsley wishes you to know, sir, she would do the same again whenever she could. Common whore. Well, if that is her ladyship's fixed resolution, perhaps she should give her assistance towards obtaining a divorce. I believe a divorce is what Lady Worsley wishes for. There will be no divorce.
Was Jane with him? Did you see my Mary? No, I did not. Perhaps they remain in Lewis. Seymour, he was with a lawyer. What? A lawyer? Speak to Richard. If you wish for a divorce, look him in the eye and ask him for one. I do not have to do anything Richard bids me to do anymore. I do as I please. I am happy now. He knows my wishes. You express them. Seymour, please. I did my duty to him as his wife, and I obliged his every whim. I will not go to him, sir. He must let me go. Lady Worsley must understand. She now has a clear choice. She may return home to us, and we undertake to forgive her. If she does not, there will be a trial, and I will prosecute Captain Bissett. He will pay, and she will condemn them both to a life of penury. I see. If I may, surely, given the extraordinary intimacy of your friendship with Captain Bissett, you may meet with him and talk with him. She is my wife, and she is mine, and mine alone, and yet she has been taken from me and fucked by that villain Bissett. Richard, Furthermore, sir, I will seek compensation in law from that scoundrel. Compensation for all that he has done to me and the damage he's caused to my rightful property. In cases of this nature, one would expect to ask for 5,000 in compensation? I will ask for 20,000. 20,000 pounds, sir. Well, why should the devil be left undisturbed? Richard. We should ask for 20,000 and then let's see how Captain Bissett likes it. Richard, litigation will not restore Seymour's affections. And it will be as costly for you as well as for the scoundrel Bissett. It is my wish. There will be public scrutiny of your private affairs, Richard. It is my wish, sir. Well, sir. If it is your wish, then we must apply our efforts to obtaining proof of adultery. We must catch them at it, sir. I should think you mean to thank me for taking you as my wife. I meant nothing by it. You will recall, Seymour, I made a vow to love and cherish, and you made a vow to love, cherish, and obey. Forgive me. I am Mr. Bissett. George Bissett. I am the new owner of Newton. So you heard them screwing? Yes, I did, sir. You kept the sheets, as I asked you to. Yes, I have, Mr. Farr. The foul state I was in as well. Well, then. This is Lady Worsley's riding crop. See if she'll claim it and give her real name. Housemaids knock, but not a way to answer. My lady, there's a riding crop left for a lady in this house. And since there's no other ladies here, may I crave the favour of your name? A riding crop? 
Yes, my lady. A riding crop and some other effects. Is the person who left that a woman servant with a child? We're instructed not to part with the crop or any other belongings unless my lady gives her true name first. Why, I'm Seymour, Lady Worsley. Where did you get that from? You are insinuated in the criminality. Yes, sir. You are implicated in the desertion of your master and the wicked plot to abduct the child that is rightfully his. Do you have any objection to seeing Lady Worsley again? No, sir. My lord is to my mistress. I understand Sir Richard is my master. Good. Do you know enough of Captain Bissett as to be certain of his person if you saw him? Yes, sir. Well, then, Miss Southerby, you are to go to Lady Worsley's bedchamber. And if you should see Captain Bissett, you are to tell me. Enter. Why did you not come as I asked? Madam, I am come by Sir Richard's orders. Mary? Madam? You come by Sir Richard's orders? Yes, madam. Where is Jane? The infant is with her father. But you must bring her to me. So it's true then, madam. You know why I'm here. I never believed you would have done it. Oh, Mary. You will not see me again, madam. Mary! Mary! He will not give up the child. He means to use Jane as a pawn to try and force your return. Seymour. You gave your actual name to the housemaids. Mary has confessed to Richard. No, no, no. You will have me prosecuted. Richard would never dare put himself and us through the humiliation of the courts. We have humiliated him. Hush now. Did you not mark how my Mary was with me? If that bitch comes again, I'll shoot her. You'll do no such thing. Does it not grieve you, you do not see our daughter? Dear Seymour, please. Does it not grieve you, sir? Sir? George. That the infant was of our love begotten, my dear Seymour, is a fact. But Richard took her for his own, and now she belongs to him. A fact, George? It was you who foolishly asked your woman to bring her. And it is you that foolishly said we must leave without her. The child is better off with Richard. How can you say so? The scandal will be great. Richard knows it. And he has us by the nutmegs. We must be patient. Deerhurst will go to him he again. He will be full of fury if Deerhurst goes to him again. He will not, If George. we provoke him further, he may suggest a duel. <laughs> he may. And I could not refuse. Oh, my love. So what do you mean by this? Morris George Bissett. Who is it that seeks him out? You are served with a writ from the court of the King's bench. We have been fools. 
He has made a claim for £20,000. I'll become a bankrupt and live out my days in the fleet prison. I have valued your wise counsel and your unfailing loyalty, but I begin to wonder. Wonder? Why, Prime Minister? Sometimes we must accept defeat, accept it in its bitter entirety. You have been wronged, and mightily so, but every wall has unseen eyes and ears. What say you, then? All of London is in uproar with talk of a cuckold in my government and a whore for a wife. I take it you are beyond reproach in all these terrible misfortunes. My reputation will remain intact. Then good. I will need every man of mine and every vote. be married and live as one with our daughter. But you are already married. It is my fortune that has acquired all of this. My fortune. Why should I not determine how I am to live? We could live as four here, as modern Seymour. No. No. It is my dearest wish that you and I and our daughter live as one. How it is my dearest wish, George. Mr. Farr. Mr. Wallace. She'll not be attending, will she? No, sir. Of course not. Lord Chief Justice Mansfield. Proceed. Sir Richard Worsley is a selfless, God-fearing and dutiful public servant of the highest order. A doting father, a loving and dutiful husband who has been wronged and subject to an outrageous plot. Sir Richard has a seat in the House of Commons. He is a Privy Councillor and Governor of the Isle of Wight. Mr Bissett, as he was commonly known, 
became friends with the plaintiff at the time of his election to the House of Commons, and the greatest intimacy grew between them thereafter. Indeed, Sir Richard gave the defendant a commission in his regiment. The defendant had the confidence and trust of the plaintiff, both in friendship, as neighbours, and in military matters, until, that is, the unhappy event took place. Court calls Hannah Commander. Did they desire you to prepare any bedchamber? Yes, as near to the dining room as possibly could be, sir. And what else do you recall? Captain Bissett, as I didn't know him then, for I took him for her ladyship's husband. Was a scoundrel, sir. A scoundrel, you say? A proper mutton mongrel who'd give me a crown for my silence, sir. A mutton monger? Yes, sir. A mutton monger. Will you kindly endeavour to speak in respectful English? I've kept the crown, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how long did they stay? For four or five days, sir. And how did they pass? As man and wife, sir. But they was not a man and wife, sir. And the state of the bedchamber, sir, and the bed in, sir. Had they only one bed? Yes, my lord. And they was at it under the sheets when I came into the bedchamber. And they was naked, my lord, at one o'clock in the afternoon as well. How do you know who they were? Because she answered to the name of Lady Worsley, sir. It was her. Oh, <laughs> Court calls Mary Sotheby. Do you solemnly swear by Almighty God that the evidence you shall give to the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I was awoken at midnight, sir, and asked to do my lady's bidding. That is all. You were privy and party to this debauchery, madam. Yes, you were privy and party to the desertion of Sir Richard Worsley and his infant daughter. I was not, sir. Pray tell me, how old? was the infant Jane at the time of this most heartless desertion. She was four months old. And yet you conspired to abduct the infant from her father and her home. Oh, you appear entirely deficient of any morality or of conscience or of any loyalty at all to your master. Why, my lord, these are crocodile tears. My lady only loves Captain Bissett. Love! <laughs> and my lady loves her daughter Jane dearly. And then why, madam, did your lady desert her? The court calls Captain Leversuch. Do you recollect Captain Bissett and Lady Worsley at a party together which met at your house the very night of the elopement? Yes, my lord, I recall it with the utmost clarity. Captain Bissett played the piano for our entertainment.
quite a pair, wouldn't you say? It does your husband much credit that he is no Othello. <laughs> <laughs> they are so dear to me, so very dear to me. What lady could be more fortunate to have a husband of such distinction and a friend of such devotion to both of us? And Sir Richard is the best and most generous kind of man. I dare say I thought no such friendship could exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have terrible migraine. How it afflicts me so. Sir, that is the claret. Mm. <laughs> Very lucky. He is often afflicted with the migraine, and none so often as in the bedchamber. <laughs> <laughs> you are wicked, madam. You are wicked. Why is it wicked, sir, to laugh and speak the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Pope is a duddering ninny who was fool enough to fall in love with a woman who did not love him and who was far his superior in every respect. I am familiar with the predicament, sir. But most cruel. <laughs> it is said that Lady Montague laughed at Pope as he unfolded his heart. <laughs> <laughs> It is a cold heart that's not moved by the tragic beauty of Pope's two lovers struck by lightning. Pope's work does not compare to the verses of Lady Montague herself. The man who feels the dear disease forgets himself, neglects to please. Well, Pope is the greatest poet that's ever lived. <laughs> I know they find me a terrible bore, Mrs. Lever such, but. What am I to do but be myself? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you out. I cannot spend another week in his company. Why do we not leave tonight? Do you mean it, George? I do. But if you want to go, we must go now. And what of Jane? We cannot take the child tonight. The risk is too great. I cannot leave without her, George. Then we cannot go. Listen to reason, Seymour. If we take the child tonight, he will know that we are leaving. And he will never allow that. What are you two lovebirds twittering over? We must send word to Mary. She can bring Jane and all my belongings in the morning to us and send word to dear Hurst. Good night, my dears. Good night. And you had no knowledge of this affair? No. I heard not a whisper, my lord, of any relationship of that kind between Lady Worsley and Captain Bissett. And did Sir Richard Worsley know of this adulterous relationship prior to the elopement? No, none at all, my lord. He remained quite in the dark, as did we all. Captain Bissett is a deceitful scoundrel, and myself and Mrs. Leversuch are entirely innocent of any knowledge or involvement in this most sordid elopement. My lord, far from being ignorant of Lady Worsley's intimate friendship with Captain Bissett, Sir Richard Worsley openly encouraged it. Indeed, my lord, intimate relations between a great many gentlemen and ladies of rank in the South Hampshire militia were common knowledge. <laughs> Sir, are you truthfully giving evidence to this court that you had no indication at all that Lady Worsley and Captain Bissett were, shall we say, intimate friends? No, sir. And if I may say, my lord, I was and remain deeply shocked and alarmed by this whole affair. And, and if I may also say, my lord, 
Sir Richard and Lady Worsley were very happily married, and until she made the acquaintance of Captain Bissett, she always did her husband's bidding. Thank you, Captain Leversuch. That will be all. How is it just that Richard can paint such a false picture of our marriage? Something must be done. Madam, what is to be done? Captain Bissett is plainly proven to be guilty of adultery. Now, we have put a doubt in the jury's mind as to whether Sir Richard knew that the relations between you were established before the elopement, and perhaps the compensation could be reduced by half to 10,000? We have no means to pay such compensation, sir. 10,000 and George still ends up in the fleet, and I will never see my love again. Where the adultery is proven, the defendant cooperates fully in all of society, that is what is expected. And the scandal is reduced by default. Why can I not tell the whole truth? Madam? I am not worth 20,000 pounds. Nay, Lady Worsley. What if you may prove that I was not worth 20,000 pounds long before I met Captain Bissett. George would need not confess to anything. But you would. How so, madam? I know what you're considering doing. Seymour, you have already lost much. As a consequence of your love affair and your elopement, you have lost your means, your place in society. You will never see your daughter again, of that I'm certain. If you choose this path, you may not win. But whatever the outcome, you will be shamed forevermore. I do not want to lose George. It will not touch my love for you. I must have time to think. What else may I do? Go to Sir Richard. Reason with him. Worsley is here. What does she want of me? She wishes to see the child, and if you wished it, to speak with you, Sir Richard. Richard, do you not think it wise to hear? Sir Richard Worsley wishes it to be known to Lady Worsley that the child is not here. And in any case, if the child were here, Lady Worsley would not be permitted to see the child. For Lady Worsley has forgone all her maternal rights and Sir Richard is no longer obliged, nor is he disposed to grant them. Furthermore, Sir Richard wishes it to be known that Lady Worsley's visitation is a further cruel and vicious act perpetrated upon his person. And he will inform the Lord Justice in the morning.
We must tell the truth. And I will do as you wish, Seymour. That man is a damn fool. The defendant is very ready to admit that the plaintiff is entitled to a verdict. But I will prove, to the satisfaction of the jury, that the plaintiff is not entitled to £20,000 of compensation. Lady Worsley is not worth the sum of £20,000. I will prove this to be a fact, my lord. The court calls the Right Honourable Lord Deerhurst. Madam, our marriage and our frolics are for us and us alone. Of course they are. I must know that I can rely on you. Of course you can, Richard. <laughs> On what year was your lordship first acquainted with Lady Worsley? We were introduced by Sir Richard Worsley in the year 1779. Hmm. And you became an intimate of hers? Yes, I was a most intimate friend. You have had an intimacy of friendship, but have you had any particularly intimate connection with her. In the bedchamber. With your Lordship's permission, I decline that question. It is improper for a gentleman to admit whether he has had many prior and intimate connections with Lady Worsley, sir. Well, certainly. You have no right to be asked that question. The court calls the Right Honourable Lord Peterborough. How did your Lordship first make the acquaintance of Lady Worsley? I was first introduced to her by Sir Richard Worsley at Sadler's Wells. What about that fly fellow? How intimate were your relations with the Lady Worsley? Sir, you may decline that. Sir, how may a gentleman admit to the most intimate of relations with Lady Worsley? <clears throat> the court calls the Honourable Charles Wyndham, Esquire. of Graham. <sighs> the court calls Joseph Bouchier-Smith, Esquire. Thank <laughs> you. 
This indifference, Richard, so often you blame, is not owing to nature, to fear, or to shame. I hate to be abused and never will accept years of solitude and pitiful neglect. They are mine, Richard. They are my most private things. It's no more than the trifling doggerel of an ungrateful shrew. Please leave me in peace. Dr. Osborne, in what condition did you find Lady Worsley? She had a number of complaints, all of which I fancy were the consequence of venereal disease. <coughs> and were you ever employed by Sir Richard for complaints of a similar order, sir? No, sir, I was not. In your opinion, sir, did Sir Richard and Lady Worsley lie together as man and wife? No, sir. Not with any regularity, no. And what then of the child, Jane? In my opinion, sir, the child Sir Richard says belongs to him is a bastard. <laughs> the child is a bastard, you say? There was Deerhurst, and then there were others to take the stand. But Twenty-six, Seymour. I thought we lived as moderns, my love. As moderns? You see, you think me a whore, too. Forgive me, if I may. I am Mr. Bissett, George Bissett. I am the new owner of Newton. So you are Mr. Bissett? Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. I'm Sir Richard Worsley. May I present to you my wife, Lady Worsley. Mr. Bissett, I understand you have been our neighbor here a week, and you have neglected to call upon us. Forgive me, sir, madam. I have a card for you and was to deliver it to you tomorrow. Do you believe this cheeky fellow? I assure you it is the truth. And you are to stand in the by-elections for Newport? What of it? I wish you to know that you will have my vote. That is all. <laughs> Gentlemen, whilst some in Parliament may balk to call themselves a Tory, I am proud to do so. 
It has been an honor to offer myself for you as a candidate for your favor. And gentlemen, know this. If I should have the honor of being freely elected by you, I shall, when your service requires it, be at your service forevermore. <laughs> I give you, my lady, the honourable member for the seat of Newport in the county of Hampshire. Oh. <laughs> I'm most remiss, my dear. Richard? I've been keeping Mr. Bissett from you. Why, Richard? I wanted him for myself. I'm sure his talents know no bounds. I've been thinking of rewarding him. Seymour. Hmm? Why, uh, sir, uh, you are too generous. <laughs> I think he would look rather dashing a commissioned officer of the South Hampshire Militia. Richard, we're away for a month. So do I. You are like no other woman I have ever met. Though some may say that what you do for your husband makes you no more than a common whore. But you are not. You have just done your best for him. You have done your duty. It is how I have kept my husband happy. You make me feel as if a new kind of future may exist. A meeting not just of lovers, but of a new kind of love based upon liberty, free will. That we may have our life together as moderns. Am I your love? You are, George. My true love. 
Good. Because you are mine. I love you, Seymour. My lord, these 26 lovers are no more than a fiction concocted by the defendant, Lady Worsley, and her friends. Not one independent witness has corroborated these implausible tales. For how much longer will Sir Richard Worsley be tormented in this manner? Sir, what say you? My lord. Are we to hear any more evidence for the defense? What is your name? Mary, madam. My maid's name is Mary. What's your name? Mary Marriott, sir. Uh huh. And you're a bathing woman? Yes, sir. Do you know Sir Richard and Lady Worsley? Yes, I do. How do you know them? Lady Worsley came to the bathhouse when they was in Maidstone, sir. Did she come on her own? No, sir. She came with Sir Richard and Captain Bissett. All three together. Sir! Richard! Seymour, Seymour. Bissett would like to do something. What? Bissett would like to watch you. <laughs> I would like Bissett to watch you. <laughs> <laughs> sure that you heard Sir Richard suggest this? Yes, he did. And it was him that asked Lady Worsley to open her legs and place her hand upon her quim. Oh, pray, Mary, is this true? It is, my lord. Titled folk hop and skip around what they can and can't be expected to say, for the sake of manners. But I've always been a plain-speaking working woman, and I tell the truth. So help me God. It is proven that Sir Richard Worsley is not entitled to damages of £20,000. In fact, I would venture, Sir Richard Worsley is not entitled to any compensation at all and that his litigation may be dismissed for it was Sir Richard Worsley himself who debased and devalued his wife. My lord, gentlemen of the jury, if a plaintiff encourages or is privy to or consenting at all or contributing to the debauchery of his wife or joined in it, he will not recover a verdict. So says the law of this land. I rest my case. Order, order. I will have this court cleared if there is not order. Silence in court. Silence in court. Sir, does the plaintiff have your verdict? Yes, he does, my lord. A clear breach of legality occurred when the defendant eloped to the Royal Hotel London with the plaintiff's wife, and he shared her bed. Well, then, sir, there is the question of compensation. The plaintiff is making a claim of £20,000. What damages, sir, do you consider proper in this case? We consider, my lord, that the defendant, Captain Bissett, 
should compensate the plaintiff, Sir Richard Worsley, the total sum of one shilling. We've done it, George. We have our life together now. How exactly is that, madam? Madam, he will let me go now. Richard? See me. Richard! You wish to speak to me? I wish for us to be divorced. And to have Jane. She belongs to George and I. She is our daughter. And I want all that rightfully belongs to me. You have exposed and humiliated me. And you have willfully betrayed the trust we shared. Please, Richard. After all that has happened and passed between us. No. Richard, I beg of you, let us put an end to this. I said no. You are mine, Seymour, and you will always be mine. I will never do as you wish. I will never grant you a divorce. You belong to me and you will always belong to me. I may be your lawful property, but I will never be yours. Compensation has been ordered and you, sir, shall have it. There! Have it! Bastard, George. Prime Minister, I do not require you to resign, sir. The government has not yet fallen. I must, my lord. I'm filled with shame. Richard, torment yourself no further. Be done with her and divorce her. Lady Worsley will no more give up her pursuit of independence than will the American colonies. These sweet Williams are pretty, aren't they, George? Very pretty, I think. What is it, my love? Let us find a new home, away from England, where we may hold our heads up high, and there we can live a life free of all this oppression and gloom. No, I won't run away from him. I won't. No. No. No, sir. Through every change I went. But ne'er could find to keep content. All different those poor garbage were. Some fat, some lean, some brown, some fair. 
Had you seen me on his breast reclined, lips glued to lips and limbs with limbs entwined? With oft-repeated acts of dalliance spent, my lust quite sated, my heart content. Sir Richard, worse than sly, cursed the charms that gave him once a virgin to his arms. But, sir, those charms you cannot justly blame, for wert not thou the author of thy shame. Seymour, we have no money. George, we have lots of money. Richard has it, and I'm his lawful wife. So I can spend it as I wish. Richard has asked me to go to him. Perhaps these verses should be the last, my dear. What a triumph your love of poesy has become. Well, someone has to ensure we do not starve, George. When I'm finished with it, you can take me to bed, if you wish. My love for you has declined. But Richard wishes to see me. I know he does. I did everything for you. I know you did. Why are you doing this, George? I thought I could live like this, but I can't. Are we not moderns? Not if living like this is being a modern. This is because I cannot give you a legitimate heir. No, Seymour. I do not love you anymore. I'm very sorry. Very sorry indeed. My daughter was taken from me because of you. What will you do? I don't know, George. Go back to Richard. You were never mine. Nay, he take you back for a father. I belong to no man. And while it is my misfortune to live in an age of men, I will never belong to any man ever again.
You wish to speak to me? I will grant your wish and return your clothes and jewels. And I will pay you a generous allowance on the condition that you cease all expenditure and that you leave England at once and remain abroad in France for four years. You would send me into exile? There is peace with France. I'm sure you'll be most content there. And what of Jane? I acknowledged her as mine, and she will remain with me. But it's unfair to keep... You left Ch us, Seymour. It is the law. You have forfeited all rights to Richard, her. Richard, I am more than a stranger to her. You're not too old to have another babe, Seymour. You have George. You're free to breed as many bastards with him as you wish. You wish me to depart for four years? Why do you complain, sir? I have lost everything. And only you. And so am I. Then we are agreed. I loved you, Richard. And I obeyed you, but you never cherished me. <laughs>